Hello my frugal friends, welcome back to our place for another what's for dinner video. Today's video is actually going to tie in with last week's use it up pantry challenge video if you haven't had a chance to check that one out be sure to go and check out the link down below but basically we're going to be making lots of yummy food using up some bits and pieces that we have lying around at home i'm going to start by making a creamy courgette soup i found this recipe idea over on broccoli mum's channel i absolutely love her stuff and this soup is so super simple to make basically you're going to need a potato a zucchini an onion some garlic and you're just going to pop it all in the pot i'm going to start by sauteing off my veggies in my slow cooker pressure cooker and uh, getting everything ready and then I'm going to let my pressure cooker do the rest of the work for me. If yours doesn't have a saute uh, function on it you can of course just do this in a pot on the stove top but basically it is a dump and go recipe and I absolutely love it. So I've started by chopping up all of my vegetables which I'm just going to go ahead and pop into my slow cooker pressure cooker yes it does both which is why we have it in the caravan with us it's a super awesome appliance to have and i love being able to get things bulk cooked while we are on power and have the ability to use these appliances again this is a really simple recipe that you can just do on the stove to top if you don't actually have a, a pressure cooker or a slow cooker uh, you can just do it in the pot on the stovetop as well and it works just as well so once we've got all of the veggies into the pot I'm going to toss those around a little bit and add enough water just to cover everything basically once that's all in pop the lid on and let it do its thing I like to cook this for about 30 minutes and then let it do a slow release so my pressure cooker has a couple of different settings i did want 30 minutes i went past it there so we're just going to try again uh put it on for 30 minutes on the soup setting and let it let it go while that was cooking i decided to make some corn bread muffins to go with it again just using up basic staples that i always have in the pantry so I'm starting off with some polenta. Uh, this is a recipe that I have adapted from Recipe Tin Eats and I really like this one. It's one cup of polenta to one and a quarter cups of self-raising flour. Just want to gently mix all of those dry ingredients together. Of course, if you are using plain flour, you could just put a little bit of baking powder in there as well and you're going to get a nice rise. The trick to this one is that you want one cup of creamed corn not the whole can just one cup so you will need to measure that out and you're going to have a little bit of creamed corn left over i really like this recipe because i've been able to leave the eggs out of it and it still works just as well so if you're eating a plant-based diet or if you just don't have eggs in the fridge this week this recipe is quick and easy to pull together and it still works fantastically even though you don't have the eggs in it you are going to want to add some milk i'm using plant-based milk but just one cup of whatever milk you happen to have in the fridge and combine your wet ingredients before you go ahead and pop them in with the dry ingredients super simple really quick um, and like i said if you happen to have polenta or cornmeal on hand in the pantry you can always whip this one up goes great with soups as a side um, even nice as a treat um, sorry a snack <laughs> is what I'm trying to say a snack um, you can keep them in the fridge for a couple of days and they're fantastic so I just keep these in oh gosh I just cook these in a pan with a little bit of butter just to get a little bit of moisture in the bottom of the pan so that they don't stick 
Um, the batter is quite thick. You want it to be like that. And I just blob in quarter cup scoops into my pan and this makes 12 individual corn muffin drop scones I suppose is, is what you would call them. You could do these in muffin tins as well in the oven. Um, they would work just as well that way and if you're going to do them in the oven I would bake them at about 180 degrees and cook them for probably 20 to 25 minutes until they come out uh, cooked in the center. We like to do these as drop scones and they go absolutely fantastically with soup. So once your soup has finished we're going to get in there and blend it and make it nice and creamy. I don't have a blender so I am using my potato masher but it works just as well. Once you've mashed it all together we're going to add some seasonings. I've just got some garlic salt which works really well. The other thing which I didn't film but I will tell you guys is I put in half a cup of soy milk as well just to make it nice and smooth and creamy. But this consistency has come together with just a potato masher. So it is a really lovely creamy courgette soup and you can thank those potatoes in there for making it so lovely, rich and creamy. This is actually a really filling meal and I really enjoyed this one, particularly with these beautiful little corn bread, corn meal, uh, drop scones uh, as a little bit of dipping bread. They were so soft and fluffy and beautiful and together was just oh, an absolutely delicious lunch and a great way to use up some veggies that were in the fridge that needed using and a few pantry staples. Next up we're going to make a shepherd's pie or a lentil shepherd's pie so they can use up a few more things from the fridge but also a couple of things from the pantry as well. I'm actually going to top this one with a sweet potato top rather than your regular white potato but it will work just as well and it's just as yummy. So I'm going to start by preparing our potatoes and I'm actually going to cook them in the microwave just to cut down on time a little bit but prepping those potatoes, getting them out of the way, and then I can get on to the rest of it. So once again, we're going to start by dicing up an onion, which I'm then going to saute in my pressure cooker, slow cooker, and cook pretty much the base of or the bulk of this in my pressure cooker. The other thing I am going to do is just chop up these cauliflower pieces. I'm going to chuck in some cauliflower as well, um, but I am going to chop those up so they're bite-sized pieces before I try to put those in with the rest of the veggies. This is a really great recipe because basically you can throw in whatever veggies you have in the fridge that needs to be used up so long as you've got your base down, which is pretty straightforward. I'm using an onion, some celery, just get that um, cooking and I'm going to get my lentils in. So it's one cup of lentils, which I do like to rinse off first and just pick over, make sure there aren't any strange stones or bits and pieces in there using dried legumes. It's always a good idea to just uh, pick over those and make sure it's nice. And we're going to add in three cups of water to one cup of lentils. From this point onwards, it's a can of tomatoes and then whatever seasonings you've got. Now I happen to have this lamb casserole packet that's been in my pantry for way longer than I would like to admit. So it's time to use that up, but I'm just making a basic gravy paste. You could actually even use gravy powder that's often what I do, but like I said, this is a use it up challenge. So I'm using up that packet of lamb casserole seasoning and we're going to get that gone. I'm also going to use up the little bit of leftover creamed corn from our cornbread muffins because it's a use it up challenge. Why not? I'm going to pop in my cauliflower. Like I said, you could just use whatever veggies that you have on hand. And because I like to put green things in things, I'm going to chuck in a little bit of spinach as well. This recipe is super versatile. You could use whatever vegetables that you have. As long as you've got that tomato gravy base with your lentils, it's all going to work fantastically. And once again, I'm going to cook this 
on a soup setting for me so that I can get 30 minutes. It's probably more important to get 30 minutes. And then pop the sweet potato in the microwave for five minutes when this is almost done. So once it's had its 30 minutes, I did do a uh, pressurized release so that I could pop my beans in. As you saw, it was very steamy and they just need to heat through. I'm not going to put that back on to cook. The beans will just cook in the hot sauce while I'm mashing the sweet potato to go on top. So after a quick fork mash, I'm going to add a little bit of milk just so that I've got a nice consistency that's easy to work with. Mix that all together and then it's time to get everything into a large pan. So this is the only pan that I have in the caravan. So this is the one we're going to work with today. I have no idea what size it is. It came with our oven and it's what I always use for baking. Basically, I'm going to load this up with our sauce on the bottom, our casserole, get as much in there as I can, but not so much that it overflows. And then I'm going to top it off with the sweet potato. I've also done this uh, with traditional white potato, but I've also done this with a cornbread topping as well with a similar recipe to what you saw me use earlier to make the cornbread muffins. Um, I made a much bigger batch of it and I popped that on top of this as well and it made a nice cornmeal crust which also works fantastically with a shepherd's pie. So if you don't have potatoes and you're looking for something to put on top of as a crust, but you happen to have some polenta, that works a treat as well. But it wouldn't be a shepherd's pie with potato unless you topped it with some sort of cheese. Now, we use nutritional yeast, but if you have parmesan or grated cheese, you could go and chuck that on top. And then all you've got to do is stick it under the grill because basically everything's cooked. I just wanted to brown off the top and brown off the cheese. As you can see, we've got heaps of leftovers. So not only is this made a massive serve, but I do have a little bit of the gravy, the, the base left over as well. And the last thing I'm going to make, this is going to be a beautiful couscous salad with some diced figs that I also really want to use up and get out of my pantry. Couscous is so easy to cook and use. This is almost a no cook recipe, which is why I like it. Basically, we want one cup of couscous. Now I can tell you guys that this packet did not actually give me one cup. So we are going to have to make some modifications here, but it's a one to one ratio. You want one cup of couscous, one teaspoon of stock powder. This is just a basic stock powder, but you could use chicken, beef, it doesn't really matter. And once that's mixed through to give it a little bit of flavor, you want one cup of boiling water. And again, because I didn't quite have one cup, I'm going as close to that ratio as I can. Uh, but really simple, mix it together and you're just going to let it sit for five minutes until that couscous has absorbed all of the water. If in doubt, always just follow the directions on the back of the packet. But that's pretty much it, folks. So while that's having a little rest, I'm going to rinse our chickpeas. Always like to just rinse over those and pick off any skins that I can see uh, floating around in the water. But I thought what I would do with these is actually rinse these off. I'm going to pop them into the air fryer and make little chickpea croutons which I've seen done heaps but I thought that would be really nice in this salad. So the chickpeas are going to add some protein but because I'm putting it in the air fryer it's also going to add a nice little bit of crunch and we're just going to change the texture up a little bit as well. They don't need very long. I think I only gave these three minutes then I gave it a little bit of a shake just to loosen them all up and put it on for another two minutes but they cook very, very quickly, and uh, by the time they're done, um, your couscous is definitely ready. So once it's had its five-minute rest, you just want to give it another good fluff, 
then we can go ahead and start adding in the extra ingredients so i'm adding in half a cup of dried diced figs i've had these in the pantry for far too long so i definitely need to use those up and i can't believe that i didn't actually think of doing this recipe earlier because i can tell you guys this was amazing i also threw in some sunflower seeds now you could pretty much use anything um, nuts or seeds in this would work really quite nicely the recipe that i was taking a little bit of inspiration from had pine nuts which you would toast off but i really didn't feel like cooking this day so i just used the sunflower seeds because they could go straight in basically we're just going to layer it up so this is just a mix from the supermarket it's a um, Aussie family mix I think from IGA was what it was called but basically it's a four leaf mix with some carrot in it and that's going to be our base we're popping on about a third of the couscous and fig of course topping it off with those crunchy chickpea croutons and finishing it off with whatever dressing you happen to have in the fridge that also needs using up because this is a use it up challenge uh, this was a beautiful vinaigrette raspberry vinaigrette that worked really really well with it and the funny thing is that after i made this um, i thought i was the only one who was going to eat this so i only made one and had heaps of leftovers as you can see here i've used about a third of the couscous i've still got um quite a bit of the chickpeas and i've got a little bit of salad but i showed my husband and he said that looked absolutely delicious so then i had to make one for him as well and as we were making it he actually suggested that beetroot and hummus would work really well with this as well so we did add some beetroot and some hummus to this as an afterthought and it was the perfect way to finish this salad off absolutely delicious